Alright guys, welcome back. So today, I'm going to be showing you how to do squirrel taxidermy. And this video is going to be lengthy. It's not going to have many cuts because the best taxidermy videos show you the whole thing. And there's some things you can miss if they cut around. So I'm just going to do a straight record of me skinning it. It's part one of three, skinning it. You have skinning, fleshing, and mounting and I'm going to put all the materials that you need down in the description but the one thing I will say is get some gloves some rubber gloves like that say so you can uh, well not get any diseases or anything because the squirrel is bloody and that blood is where you get the diseases from so I don't want none of that so today's video is going to be how to skin squirrel for taxidermy and I'm going to move you in close and I'm going to zoom you in a little bit you guys can see that pretty good so the first thing you want to do is skin well if you want to save it for meat alright you cut a hole right here and gut it and then put it in the freezer so that you can use the meat later on down the road so I already did that and I got it out of the freezer already this is actually the squirrel in um had it much had a squirrel hunt video I'll put it up in one of the corners so you can go watch that if you want but so I'm gonna show you how to skin it and now when I gut it I do it up to the ribs but when you're skinning it you should do it up and normally my knife's not sharp enough so I'll just use my scissors And I'm going to put all the descriptions down below of all the materials. And now you just want to skin the skin back on each side. And you can start in the fr front, going towards the front or the back, it doesn't really matter. Just skin the meat away from the fur and you can get in there and use your hands like that if, it, if it's not frozen but today I uh, I went to school so I set it out before school and it's really pliable so I think the easiest way to do it is work to the tail first get the tail good and then go up towards the head and do it that way instead of going from going to the head first and the front legs so you just want to peel the skin away y'all can see that I'm sorry if I don't talk too much because it takes a lot of concentration to do. Now you can really use any knife that you want as long as it's sharp enough to just skin around. But the scalpels and stuff like that are just a lot easier to do. And then you can just peel it just like that once you get enough out of there. Now you want to try and get as much meat away as you can and that saves you in the fleshing process. So now once you have it skinned down to your legs you want to take your leg in this hand 
in this hand, pop it up, and you can see it there. You want to pop it up out of the socket. Ugh. Just like that. And this leg is actually pretty demolished because, well, I guess that's where I shot it. It came out. I, it went like up here and it came out the leg or something. And then you try to poke your finger through the skin there to get it around the leg. Sometimes you have to cut it a little bit. Try to peel the skin away from the meat. And then you get your finger through there like that. And then you can pull on it a little bit. Now don't pull too much. Get to about there. And then skin a little bit. Because you don't want to pull too much or else it'll pop off and then you got a bigger problem always wanna do more cutting when it comes to the legs than you think because you'll make a lot less mistakes guaranteed now on squirrels they're not super fatty or anything so you want to skin to like the last joint you don't that's about all you have to do and with squirrels you don't have to really tan them you just you can use borax and then that that'll be plenty y'all can't see that Gonna titch, tilt you all down. That's better. It is recording, that's good. <laughs> That'd be bad. And now. You can skip around in this video, you should, and find the good parts, because you don't need to watch the whole, like, every second of it. It's like, right now, there's a, you're not really getting any info. All I'm saying to do is just skin a little bit, pull, skin a little bit, until you get down to the first joint. But I'm going to do it for all legs and you'll see it all. Because I don't think... When people skip around in taxidermy videos, it doesn't do good. At least for beginners and stuff. Which is mostly what this video is about. Which is for... And if you're just starting, like your first one, I'd recommend get a couple squirrels before you do it. And the way I'm going to do it, you won't need a form, but if you're going to do a form, measure from the tip of the nose to the base of the tail right there before you start doing anything. I should have said that, but I forgot. I'm sorry and get a couple cause around the same size because you'll mess it up and when buying a form always go like the size lower at whether that's a half an inch I wouldn't really go an inch but like a half an inch I would go a half an inch smaller just because then it, the fur is fuller and now as you can see I got to the last joint there on the back foot. I'm just going to take my scissors and 
Now you can do it without scissors, but I highly recommend it. I've done it without scissors, so whatever, but it is what it is. And now you got one leg done. You want to take your hand and make it so that there's no fur touching the back. Like like that. And now get to the side where there the legs still there. Poke it through again. It's a little hard, but you'll get the hang of it. Just want to push it through. About to there, and then skin it. And then you want to just, like I said with the other one, get your finger below the leg and just pry at it until you get it through like that. And then, oh boy, this is not good. The thing is screwed up. The leg was is uh, like bent inside of there, so I'm gonna just make it go like that, and then pull it like that. See it? It's straight now. It's not like it was crooked inside the skin. Now you want to pull till you feel resistance, and then just skin around on the back back part of the foot right after the joint. and pull it, skin, My th your thumbs will hurt because it takes a lot uh, with your thumb work and you have to keep using them, especially once we get to the fleshing part next video, which I normally like to skin it one day, flesh it the next, and then if I have time I'll mount it that day, but sometimes I'll, after you flesh it, you wash it. I'm just concentrating because I had to pull it and I was scared. <laughs> but if you take your time, you'll know once it's, it's going to break. And like I said, I'll have all the materials down below. I will. I won't just be lazy. Alright, so I'm down to the first joint again. You're going to take your scissors and snip. You can snip a little bit up. It doesn't matter. Just don't cut the fur. That's a important thing. And now you have the back with the legs off. So now you want to take the fur and pry it up towards the base of the tail and try and get all of the skin off of it. And now once you're at the base of the tail you want to skin a little bit. It's a poop sack or something. gonna go in there and whatever the heck that is grab that out of there and now you want to grab your tail stripper this is just the cheapest one you can get it's, it was like five bucks or something put it right there and just oh, it's slippery so you gotta really tighten down just go at it quick and you get the tail. 
and the bones out of it. Now, it's not the biggest deal. If you rip the tail off, you can, like, sew it back together, but you want, that's why I say you want a couple extra squirrels. Now, as you can see, that's the bullet hole right there. So, like, right on deer, that's a lung shot. Yep, it's the ribs. Pretty soon, right now, it's um, September 22nd. It's a Wednesday. Next Friday, it's actually deer season. So that, you'll see that for sure. And right there, you can see the bullet hole on the hide. And that this from a 22, as you saw, but normally, and now just pull it until you feel tension, and then just skin a little bit. But normally, for taxidermy, the best thing to use is uh, like six shot or smaller, because then you don't have to like the holes are so small you don't have to sew them. And long range with a shotgun this is the best for taxidermy. I mean if you get a squirrel with a shotgun at like three yards yeah that's gonna be bad but now as you can see right there I did mess up but I'm just gonna skin that out and I'll sew it back later but because I pulled too much I should have just kept cutting but Now normally when you don't have gloves, you can get, get your fingernail up in there and pry it, but... But you also want pliers. So you can pry on stuff. Alright, so as you can see, I made it down to the, uh, the last joint, and you can cut it off, and then I just cut the end off with the fur too. And now, you want to go over to the next side, and just again, push the arm through, and then get it on the other side use your thumb and just push up in there like the armpit like right here push like boom push like right up in there <sighs> takes a little bit but then you get it thought I saw a squirrel outside all right don't pull too much learnt my lesson Now just skin the membrane away. I think that's what you call it. I'm, you'll know, you know what I mean. It's straightforward. But I figured I'd make this video for y'all. As you can see, he got down to the last joint. Snip it off. And boom, got both all legs off. And now you wanna take the skin and pull it to the neck. And now see that membrane stuff? You wanna take it and cut it. Now this knife isn't so sharp, but you want a sharp knife. That's for sure. Now just skin around there, up in the neck. And then pull it 
and you'll get up there and you have to skin that. Now, make sure you aren't wearing good clothes when you do this. I mean, I'm wearing good clothes, but you don't want to. And now, see the air holes. See them? See that right there? When you get to those, you want to just cut it down deep. Go really hard at them. Like right there. Hard. Boom. Boom. And now, after the ears, you gotta get ready for the eyes. And then you wanna do the same thing for the eyes as you did the ears. Just go hard down. And sometimes I switch to a bigger knife, like that. When it's bone like this on the skull. But that's too dull, I guess. I'm going to take in a second break because fingers get a little hurt after that. I'm going to widen you all out. There. That's good. Now, same on the other side. It's cut deep, right where the skin wants to go. <sighs> All right. Now I don't know how this, how long this is going, but I'm sweating in here. Cause this is just the shed. As you guys seen a couple other videos, like uh, what's in my trapping bag and the dupe trap video. Oh, my, your thumbs will really get sore, so you have to be prepared for that. Don't be a wimp. Just keep going until you're done. It'll be worth it. And this Saturday, I'm going to go duck hunting. I might make it a video if I shoot one. Might not, but if I get one, I've never shot a duck before, so I'll mount it. And if you guys want to see that, just let me know. And also a pheasant. I'm thinking I can do a pheasant. Because I'm going to go pheasant and duck hunting this weekend. Because it's seasons for them. I'm going with like a group. Ugh. That noise is horrible. It's like that chalkboard noise. Now just keep skinning down to the nose. You want to get the whole nose and get the cartilage. Because that's very important for the mouth to make it look good. Else it'll look like a zombie. I made a couple of those, trust me. Don't be afraid if it doesn't look, come out good. I have, haven't made too many, but a couple that are weird, very weird looking, to say the least. 
on the bottom you just want to keep skinning it and it'll come out what the heck? now you can pry with your fingers if they're not fried already pull a little bit and just keep skinning your bottom once you get close and then skin like up in the jawline and just wherever you see the skin touching the head and you can see the little membrane just take your knife and just run it down that line and you'll get it And if you shot it in the head, it's going to make it a lot difficult, I'll tell you that much. Because I've shot them in the head and it's, it's bad. It's not fun. Because this whole skull is just demolished. Once you get to the nose here, you want to be careful. Because you want to leave the cartilage on there. But you also want to be, not want to just cut a lot and cut the cartilage off but you want to just take your knife and just run it just like you were and, oh, that noise get out of y'all's way and just run her watch your hands you'll definitely get cut if you're not careful, you shouldn't get cut every time, but if you do this for any amount of time, you'll get cut. Just make mistakes, but you don't want to make them much. And then you get down to the top teeth after you did the front ones and that comes comes easy and then boom widen it out and you got yourself a skin now if you got time you can uh, wash it and then let her dry and hair dry her real good but normally after I flesh it I'll turn it inside out, take your gloves off, because you don't need them no more. And what, like, I, what like, I like to do with the gloves is you take one hand off and then you have the dirty one in the other hand. And you just go like that, and then they're both in there. And you set it in your garbage pile. Oh, I got blood on my jeans. Here we go. And, um... So, that is your squirrel skin, ready for taxidermy, and um, like I said, this is a part one of three series of squirrel taxidermy. What do you guys want to see next, taxidermist? And uh, when you put, before you put it in the freezer, alright, and you can click, you, it might be time, you want to roll from your nose, alright, roll from your nose. Take it and roll it down fur side out and roll it to put it in your freezer. You want to roll this, make sure everything is fur side out and the legs are tucked up inside the skin and fur. Then you want to take your tail, just wrap it around, put this in about two or three Ziploc bags so it doesn't get freezer burnt. And uh, you're golden to good. Gold, golden. And you're good. Yeah. Now, this fur, this meat, I'm not eating that. It doesn't really smell good. Because it's been outside for like a whole day in here. And it's about like 75 degrees. 
That's you don't want to eat that, okay? And like I said, all the stuffs in the description, like and subscribe. And um what do you guys want to see more? What what do you guys want to see taxidermist? And um stay tuned for part 2 and 3 in the upcoming videos that I was talking about and I'm um, uh click right there to watch video and click right there to subscribe. And um, if you guys want to see the bird flesher, there's another video. I'll put that right there. But uh, see y'all later. Bye.